This is Advanced Algebra Lesson 6-8, Pure Imaginary Numbers. Up until this point, your studies in mathematics have been limited to the study of real numbers. So we're going to add a whole another set of val numbers for you. They're called complex numbers. But specifically within complex numbers, we're going to look at imaginary numbers, pure imaginary numbers. And we're going to start begin looking at them as it pertains to the square roots of negative numbers. So the square roots of negative numbers are pure imaginary numbers and are all multiples of the square root of negative 1, defined as the number i. Square roots of negative numbers, let's take a look at. If I want to take the x squared equals 400, I know that if I want to solve for x, I could take the square root of both sides. I know the square root of x squared is the same as the absolute value of x, and I know that the square root of 400 is 20. So if I have the absolute value of x, x can be either plus or minus 20. Now I, I run into trouble when I have x squared equals a negative 400 because we have never been able to, up until this point, been able to take the square root of a negative number because real numbers do not, do not evaluate a negative square root. But if you were to go to your CAS calculator and if you were in column complex mode, you would find that the square root of negative 400 is equal to 20i. So the definition of the square root of k when k is negative. So when k is less than 0, the two solutions for x squared equals k are the square root of k and the opposite of the square root of k. So we need to evaluate what is i. i is simply the square root of negative 1. So if we take a square root of a negative number theorem, if k is less than 0, then the square root of k is equal to i times the square root of the opposite of k. Let's take a look at our first example. So if I take a look at my first example that says I want to solve x squared equals a negative 625, we know that when we, we take the absolute value of of x that would give us a plus or minus value. So I could have either the square root of a negative 625 or the opposite of the square root of a negative 625. So I'm going to break this down just a little bit and I know that a negative 625 is the same as a negative 1 times 625 and I know that the square root of a negative 1 is i and the square root of 625 is 25. So i times the square root of 625 is the same as 25i. And then we do it the same thing again, but using the opposite. So I have negative 625 being the same as negative 1 times the, 620, the square root of 625. And so I have, carry down the negative, square root of negative 1 is i, and carry down the square root of 625. I know the square root of 625 is 25, so my value for x is negative 25i. So for x squared equals a negative 625, my values for x are plus or, plus or minus 25i. Let's take a look at example number 2. I want to show that i times square root of 10 is the square root of a negative 10. So if that's the case, then that would mean that i times square root of 10 times i times the square root of 10 would have to equal negative 10. So let's see how that works out. If I move the i's together, that would be i times i and square root of 10 times square root of 10. Now we know square root of 10 times square root of 10 is 10, and we know i times i is i squared. But we need to evaluate what is i squared. If you go over here, I have a li I've worked it out for us. i is the square root of negative 1, so square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 would be negative 1. So we know that i squared is the same as negative 1. You'll want to remember that. You'll want to star this and pay attention to that. So if i squared equals a negative 1, a negative 1 times 10 would equal negative 10. So i times the square root of 10 is the square root of negative 10. What is the other square root of negative 10? And we know that when we do this, x squared equals a negative 10, we would have two values, the plus or minus value. So the, the other square root would then be a negative i times square root of 10. Now I have three examples here that I'm going to work through with you and then we will do several of these in class. We have 7i equals a negative 10i. So we want to simplify that 
7 times a negative 10 will give me negative 70 i times i squared, or i times i is i squared. So a negative 70 times i squared, remember, i squared is a negative 1, so negative 70 times a negative 1 would give me 70. Take a look at b. The opposite of the square root of negative 25 minus the square root of negative 100. We know that a negative 25 would be 5i, we have the opposite of that, minus a 10i. A negative 5i minus 10i would then give us 15i. Take a look here. Negative 3, square root of negative 3 plus square root of negative 3, each of these would be i, so each of these would be i root 3. So i root 3 plus i root 3 would be 2i times the square root of 3. Take a look at letter D then. Square root of negative 25 we know is 5i. Square root of negative 64 would be 8i. My i's will cancel, so that will leave me with 5 eighths. This concludes lesson 6-8.